So after tweaking, this is my current crossover setup. It needs a little bit of work to try to get that three-way or the most of that three-way. Now what I'm trying to do here is not make a uh, Rube Goldberg machine and overlay complicate this crossover. Plus the downside is if I run a bunch of components in that crossover network, every time that signal goes through another capacitor, another inductor, theoretically you lose something. So uh, I think simplicity is the best and uh, that's what we're gonna try to do. So this is the first crossover. So this is the first crossover that I ever came up with. And you can see there's uh, one, two, three different components for the for the signal to go through to get to the speaker. And then I've got another two that go down to ground and that's gonna affect my, affect my impedance. And you can kind of see that a little bit of that's going on here. And I'm wondering if this is partially the reason why I've got that dip in the higher frequencies because the ohms drops to about uh, three ohms here at 15,000 hertz. So maybe that's why I'm liking the minimalistic one or the one that I took some of those components out of better. Uh, the main frequency for the other speakers has got two inductors and uh, one capacitor. And I don't think this is bad for uh, the mid-series. What I don't like here is, I'm, as previously mentioned, I'm getting noise cancelling between these two speakers. And I think that's because they're both on the same polarity. I also have noticed that the uh, mid or the white speaker that I've got up there, it can take the power and rightfully it shouldn't. It's a 60 watt speaker, I think. And uh, the one on the bottom there, I think is a 300 watt speaker. It's, it's capable of taking much more. So I should be sending my base there and scrapping sending any base to this one. So that's kind of my theory right now. And then putting this one on a different phase so that it doesn't overlap. Sorry, I should put this one on a different phase so the overlapping doesn't um, noise cancel from either of the top components that are going to be kind of overlapping the curves on it. All right, so a while back I was already playing around and messing with this design and adding that subwoofer and putting the uh, tweeter and the mid on a different polarity just to kind of mess around with it and see if I could get a better curve. So this is what I ended up coming up with. This is very similar to uh, my initial on the tweeter. I didn't really change a whole heck of a lot. You can see that that tweeter band is still very flat in the XM here. What changes here primarily is the mid and the uh, the bottom speaker. And on the mid here, I've got all of the pretty much the same components, although I do add a capacitor here and I do add an inductor here. And that's to take this curve down. It lets me bring the third speaker in as just a woofer instead of trying to bring the frequencies up too high. So I get a really nice curve and a nice crossover point in two different places here. And you can kind of see where the phase change happens. And then there's another one right at the top. I'm a little bit curious to try this one as well. And it really wouldn't require me to get a whole lot of other parts to do so I would need a resistor which is a couple of bucks. The two ones that would cost me some money is the, another inductor and another capacitor. And then I could compare uh, both this one and the other one that I'm proposing to put together. I don't know, you guys will have to let me know if you wanna see it as well because I'm a little bit curious about this. This is a really nice flat curve right across. It uh, takes it up at 90 dB and that's already at about 70 has an F3, probably some around, actually even lower, uh, 20, 30, 40. Yeah, it's got like a F3 down to 40, which would be pretty impressive if it sounds good and if that's actually what works. Some food for thought there. However, back to overcomplicating things, this is a lot of components to put together for a crossover, and I'm wondering if I can't do better just by simplifying it down. So I took and went to DIYaudio.video.com. This is a great resource for uh, speaker building, crossover building, anything like that. Went to their crossovers and somewhere in here, oh, there we go. So I went to the three-way active pass crossover, entered my impedance for my speakers, and I think this is what they are, but I could be wrong, and a crossover frequency. 
I also went with 10 octaves on mine, or sorry, uh, 3.4 octaves. And I think that's somewhere where I ended up, maybe it was 120, I can't remember right now. And calculate, and it comes up with a very minimalistic design. I did, however, make mine a second order reverse polarity, and it comes up with a uh, set of values, and this is kind of get you started. You plug these values into XM, and as long as you got your uh, speaker profile set up in XM, plug these things in, it gives you a place to start. So using that as my tools, I came up with this, a much more minimalistic crossover design. And as you can see, there's a dip here in about the 50 hertz range, and it comes back up in the F3, is a little bit higher, about 80. And then it's pretty flat right across. It's not as flat as the other crossover that I just showed you guys, but I'm wondering if this will not perform better in the real world just because it's a much more minimalistic design. There's much fewer components on this crossover, especially on the top. I've got only two uh, components where the tweeter has to flow through versus the three, and maybe three is better for the sound of it. I do get a much nicer impedance curve. There's nothing underneath four ohms for any of it. And I got a little bit of a lift here actually on this one at the higher end around the 20 kilohertz range. So I'm wondering if that won't perform better. And all of this stuff too, I could kind of fix that up with just using the uh, Marantz Odyssey uh, when I do my sound testing there. It'll, it'll clean up a lot of those curves there as well. So this is the one that I've kind of thought that I'm going to go with right now. All I needed to do to uh, build these things or to build this cross or to change it, I already have a lot of these parts. I just needed to get, uh, sorry, three capacitors, one inductor, and that'll let me try this setup out and see if I like this any better. This also makes that speaker into an official three-way. And if I take and put on the curves for this thing, you can see all the speaker curves and where they kind of cross over. I'm wondering if the bottom end of this one might not work better with the previously shown curve there. Don't know. I don't know enough still. This is, for me, it's a lot about playing. Comments are appreciated from people that do know better <laughs> uh, in the description. And it, I do read all the comments and I do try to apply what you guys are telling me. So this is the plan right now anyway. I'm, got these parts ordered. In fact, they actually just showed up today. I was, thought I was going to be waiting longer for these parts than what I did have to wait for them to show up. They did just show up. I literally just opened up the box here about an hour or two ago. But uh, I'm going to put that together in this exact uh, XM configuration that I've got here and then go back to measuring it and kind of seeing what that gives me. Now looking at the two curves, I'm kind of wondering that lower F3 Man, am I better off with that setting up that crossover a little bit different to make that happen? I don't know. Live and learn. I'm going to try this out and I'll see where this part gets me. <laughs> okay, so I just discovered something here. I was a little puzzled by that one curve. What was going so much better with the uh, subwoofer? So when I was looking at the curve, I seen it's like, why is this so much better? Uh, it's, I'm guilty. My own naming convention slipped me up. I've been naming stuff the same thing. I had the wrong uh, curve in there. So I'm not even going to consider that other speaker after loading the correct driver information for that driver. But anytime you stumble across stuff like that, you got to look into it. So that's actually the same subwoofer that uh, Zaf Audio has in his 12.3 setup. So watch this. If I change this driver to that Zaf Audio kit one, which is this guy, I do believe. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Makes me really wonder. It's like, man, maybe that's would be the speaker to really finish off this setup instead of the, I think that's an eight inch. That's This is a 12 inch woofer in that setup. But I could easily tweak the rest of this out to make this a flat curve and have a much lower F3. That F3 would be somewhere down in the 70 or 60, which is already fantastic. That's lots. I can't ask for more than that. And keep it simplistic. And that goes to show you that uh, me building my first setup 
Clearly, I had no knowledge of how to pick out correct components. Learning more every day. It just doesn't stop. A uh, video for this, when I get uh, this thing set up, get this crossover put together, I'll solder it up. It shouldn't take long. And uh, I'll get that video up on the side. But at least we'll get a chance to see if that crossover functions quite a bit better than the one that I built first learning what I learned and see how good of a sound I can get out of this. And hopefully I'll get to the point at some point in my learning here where I can actually, where I can actually build a speaker setup that I really like. But it seems to be almost an endless rabbit hole so far.